Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with Gary Bedell, who is an incredibly talented TTRPG and video game and general artist. And we talked about his work on the Rivers of London TTRPG, but this is a very special video. Gary did this really cool thing where he actually drew a picture of one of the characters in the Rivers of London TTRPG. And we've sort of overlaid his work in a time-lapse next to the interview that we've got. So check it out, hear all about what Gary has to say about the work that he did uh, and about the work that he's done in the past and all kinds of other interesting things. And I hope you enjoy this discussion about Rivers of London and about the art style and the hard work that went into it. Remember to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Gary Bedell. Uh, I am an illustrator from the Midwest and I have I did some illustrations for the Rivers of London game. So you worked on the Rivers of London TTRPG, but you've got a pretty wide body of work. You've worked on all kinds of stuff in the past. Can you can you tell everyone a little bit about what you've also done? When I started out, uh, man, it was like early 2000s because I had graduated high school and I was before the the internet was big and where you did a lot in like a certain size image so you were sending stuff in like manila envelopes out to all these different companies and trying to you know get out there and stuff but uh i did a couple illustrations for some tabletop rpgs but i actually landed in gaming like video games and i was i did that for like 10 years i mean i still do now but there was this huge break of me not doing it and then all of a sudden I was doing it again but like video gaming is I think kind of similar to tabletop RPG um just more animation I think <laughs> um yeah I, got, I was in kids gaming for a while worked on stuff for uh Nickelodeon and Disney and did some Duck Dynasty stuff of all things um Agatha Christie uh Activision was really cool um, I really enjoyed working on Ben 10. Ben 10 was fun. Um, but there's something about doing illustration for a tabletop RPG that's like, it's a little bit more, it's more, you know, I don't know. There's just something about it that it, it's, the illustration is, leans, it just leans more towards storytelling visually than like video games where it's more like hey we need this for a character can you make this character do x y and z that's your pathway into professional work as a games artist and a games illustrator but i've got to ask what was your part pathway into the the world of the nerd you know i can see behind you you've got all these fantastic uh uh collectibles and obviously as a ttrpg <laughs> fan a video game fan you, you've got serious nerd cred yeah <laughs> oh man well it started when i was really really young and some of this stuff actually i i've had since i was a kid uh just kind of kept it boxed up and took it with me from move to move but uh i'm a huge like kenner star wars fan so like you know when i go to the conventions i'm always looking for the guy that's selling those to complete my collection and i'm very very close to getting all of them man like i'm so close i'm such a dork but uh no i just love it you know um uh, collecting now is different because back in the 90s it was more like oh this thing is worth so much it's like that now but instead of someone just being like this is worth a lot of money it's like this i'm buying a memory in my childhood and it's worth a lot of money so people are buying and collecting all kinds of stuff now which is crazy like uh, right over here to my right I've got this shelf and it's just got like all my my special baby comics like right there in their little hard cases and stuff and uh, they're, they're my babies like my first appearance of Gambit is over there and he's just like in this nice little yeah <laughs> so let's talk Rivers of London uh I, I'd love to hear all about uh your thoughts first of all you as we discussed, worked on a lot of different things over the years. What was different about Rivers of London? What was uniquely appealing or uniquely challenging or uniquely exciting about the project? Um, I like it because it was like this urban fantasy and I've never have uh, had the chance to work on an urban fantasy like that. So it was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. And uh, I think that was just the neatest part, especially because, you know, you have, um, 
uh, a main character who's a black man in this or like this you know uh you know current fantasy world and i love that man did you find that the kind of context of what you were being what, what you what you were, were, were illustrating was different to what you might have created before or was it similar to the illustrations you'd done for other 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 jobs other places other other products but just uh, with this added layer of an urban fantasy context rather than the usual genres that you were used to working in sort of um yes like the my painting style and and how I was taking care of it, or executing the images um yes and I, in in it I used two different techniques uh, for some of the smaller illustrations, I did everything in values first and did, did it in color, but uh, there's one of the folly and um, uh, uh, Toby, correct? The ghost hunting dog uh, is biting this tennis ball. Like he's jumping in the air for it. And uh, that illustration took me, uh, as we say here, a hot minute and <laughs> but when it we were finished with it and you know uh lynn and mike was being so helpful on it you know i was probably just a pain in the ass you know just be like hey does this part of the building do this or does it do this and they were wonderful you know and and they really guided me through that and afterwards it, the illustrations came out great so did you know the Rivers of London series before you jumped into illustrating on the TTRPG? No, um, actually, I had to really um, kind of dive in and like I'm and I'm truly not fully submerged into the universe yet. I, there's more I need to get in there and learn about and, um, and how certain things function in it, you know, and, and what things and creatures do exist and which ones don't um i i you know i love the agency it's cool um i think some characters are you know like nightingale i haven't read a lot of the series but i kind of get a weird shady vibe from that character for some reason but uh <laughs> like yeah you're you know you're cool but i think you got something else going on like very uh um kind of like the father from umbrella academy you know it's like just you know it's like you got something else going on and i want to know what that is so when you were working on rivers of london you mentioned that the genre the urban fantasy approach was something that you hadn't really dived into much before in terms of like a technical aspect something that relates to the art you were doing itself was there something that you tried that you'd never looked at before or, or or a new technique you 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 experimented with while you were working on rivers of london yes actually and it was how i executed ghost the way that i um i illustrated ghost in the rivers of london book is a way that i haven't i had never executed ghost before like in my illustration so it was really really neat doing that giving them more of a um more of a smoky smoky feel or you know changing their shapes or you know making their bodies look a certain way that it was you know it was really it was something different and I know if I wanted to go back and do that again that's like the style that I would do my ghost for the Rivers of London IP from now on that's how I would just execute all my ghosts that's really cool it's great to get that distinct visual element this is a bit of a corny question, but it's one that I should probably ask. And it's fine if the answer is. This <laughs> kind of stuff. But what was your favorite bit of it? Was there a part that was super fun uh, in, in, in particular? There was a lot of cool stuff. Um, man, I really loved doing the, the, the portrait work. Um, I really liked the illustration. There was a, uh, a woman. Gosh, I can't believe I can't. Uh, I can't remember her name. She has a greenhouse. Oh, and, and and the two officers are standing in the greenhouse and there's a vine like getting ready to touch one of them and she's kind of got like this nice little these lit eyes standing in like her plants and uh that's actually one of my favorites for sure next to the one of uh, you know toby and the folly grabbing the tennis ball but it's i think that's my next favorite for sure and in terms of the opposite in terms of stuff that was particularly challenging i mean having to develop a whole new visual I guess language for how you're going to create ghosts sounds like it might be on the money but was there something even harder oh man I'll tell you what was tricky 
was uh, interpreting Molly in a way that didn't stray from uh, how the other artists uh, drew her or illustrated her before I did and how other artists interpreted her, interpreted her and, uh, um, but the way Ben like describes her too, I had to keep this balance about Molly like between everyone. And that was the first illustration I did was all of them in the folly. Um, you know training and she's in the background and even though she was in the far background there you still have to make her look right um and the way that i i got to interpret her i was like yes i got to put a little bit of my own touches in there and uh stuck with you know the design of what everyone else was doing and i was just i was really satisfied but i think the interpretation of molly and um and peter was the other one too peter grant because in the book it says he looks like obama a little bit he re he resembles rock obama a little bit but he he but he's more uh closer to my skin tone than brock's the way he's been interpreted so you know that was a that was another thing it's like how do how do i go about you know illustrating peter and you know does he look good next to molly does he look good you know next to nightingale that you you know what i mean you have to think of those things too so okay. this might be completely off the mark but i imagine that when you're working on something like ttrpg illustration you have to make a lot more decisions like those that you just described how do you forge the visual identity for something when you're working for activision i would presume that you have a lot more direction a lot more oversight uh, is that an exciting thing for you when you get to work on ttrpgs or is it a is it just a challenge i'd love to hear about your thoughts on it i love it and it's cool because it is a challenge because sometimes there's things like okay okay uh prime example prime example uh i remember uh, this kind of goes in because you're probably going to ask me how I got into doing it, but this kind of makes us together. Um, when I, the first piece I got to do for Rivers, of course, and I mentioned, I mentioned it a hundred times, the Folly piece with Toby. Um, and the reason why uh, Lynn re reached out, and, uh, Lynn and Mike reached out and picked me for that, uh, or picked that for me, actually, I reached out first, sorry. Uh, and then they picked that piece for me. And Lynn was like, you're, I love your architecture. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not that great at architecture. <laughs> like, cause that was just something that I was kind of working on. And I, and I put these pieces up, you know, just be like, Hey, I'm kind of working on this. And like, I was like, I don't know. I don't feel that great at it. And she's like, I love your architecture. And I was like, oh no, you know, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I got, I got through it. <laughs> you, you made it. That's great. Well, but tell us that story then. How did you come on board with Rivers of London? Um, I was actually sending out emails uh, to send my portfolio to different uh, companies out there because I'll do that once in a while, every two years or so or whatnot, or every year, you know, depends on who it is. And um, I sent that Chaosium my uh, email. I said, hey, are you looking for an artist? You know, um, I'm available for work. You know, can, you know, may I send you my portfolio? You know, the unsolicited. You know, I don't want to. You know, send you my portfolio, blah blah. And then they saw it, and then they got back to me like that, and I was like, whoa, okay, whoa, this is cool. And at first, I was like, well, maybe it's a you know rejection letter or sorry, we're not looking for you know artists, but. They were like very welcoming. They're like, as a matter of fact, like, hey, we're working on this project. We want you on board. And I was like, this is excellent. And then the more I learned about Rivers of London, and I was like, this is like a way bigger deal, you know, the, than I totally imagined. It's, I mean, it's already a big deal because it's chaosium, but then there's like this bigger, it's like a big deal sandwich. You know, <laughs> you guys, like, that's amazing. Sorry, Americans always thinking food. That's, <laughs> a, that's our measurement. That's, we do measurements by food. I, I love it. it. It's a great analogy. <laughs> well, that that's so cool. Let me ask you, are you, are you familiar with uh, other Chaosium games? Uh, if you could do illustration for any other Chaosium line uh, line material, would you, would, you, would you have a front runner? I would... I would say 
uh, of course, Call of Cthulhu, because like that's the one. If I was doing like just straight like crazy beast horror monster stuff, that would be great. Um, and if there ever was one, like maybe something super like anime y. I know that sounds weird and different from what we've seen in Rivers of London, but again, I love working different ways and uh, doing different styles. So, yeah, if there was ever something that came up like that, that'd be amazing. But Call of Cthulhu, a numero uno for sure. But I would like to do more Rivers of London. I'd love to do more Rivers. Like, I feel like that's like, you know. I mean, you've defined a lot of it, as you said. So it's it's good to have that continued voice. Let me me ask you about uh, visual styles then. You talked about how you like to approach things differently, doing maybe something more anime-esque. If, yes. If you didn't have to worry about the constraints of how exactly an artwork would fit into or an illustration would fit into a, a book or into the, the scope of a product, if you could just go wild and create something super fun to do with Rivers of London, what would it be? I think um, I, I think it'd be really neat to do like, a, I don't know if you ever saw Star Wars Visions. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like something like that, but with Rivers of London. I think that would be really cool. Um, it, it may be in comic form, but closer to what Ben wants exactly, like character design wise and um, how the characters look, carry themselves, stand. I mean, I, you know, all that, but something like Star Wars Visions, but with uh, Ben at the wheel there, I think that'd be really neat. I love that. I can imagine you could do you could do a comic with a different visual identity for whoever the protagonist is. So, you know, you can have a yeah. very classic style for Peter Grant. And then when Molly comes, it's all a bit psychedelic <laughs> and weird or something. I would, I'd like to do, uh, it would be fun to do one of Toby, but it's all drawn like a Disney cartoon, like 101 Dalmatians or something like that. But it's got like this really horrible stuff in it going on at the same time. So it's kind of like that juxtaposition, like you have someone being eaten by a vampire, but it's in this, you know, and it's still just horrible. But but it's drawn like a Disney cartoon. (laughs) I love it. So let me ask you then just about some some broader stuff so you know we can get to know you and your body of work a little bit more uh you, you you've talked about um uh, an artist community that you're you're part of which has been sort of a big inspiration uh for your professional work and uh you know a, a, a guiding focus can you tell us a little bit about that well um uh, i have an artist community uh called clever kaiju <laughs> <laughs> had to rock the t-shirt for this um we are based out of the midwest we have artists from pro to you know, novice to pro um we go in there we share our work if you're stuck on something uh, we all help each other uh say if someone says oh i don't i'm not sure if these colors are right or how can i fix this shape of this body uh people will go in there and they talk to each other and, and they problem solve uh, we'll give talks. We've, uh, we've already given talks at a couple colleges. Uh, we'll go on the Discord and do discussions about like mental health or how you approach images or you know things like how you deal with social media as an artist. Um, there's just a lot going on uh, with Clever Kaiju. And if you are an aspiring artist, please come join our community. We'd love to see what you're doing and and how you're doing it. Having been part of a few sort of, uh, in my case, uh, writing and editing groups in the past, I, you know, I highly recommend yeah. anybody who's watching to go and be part of it because that stuff is always super, super valuable. Speaking of shaping the industry, which, you know, you're kind of doing with Clever Kaiju, um, in terms of the TTRPG illustration injury, in, in, uh, in terms of the TTRPG illustration industry, do you have any hopes for the future of the art form and the medium more broadly any uh, directions that you hope things go uh, from an industry perspective what direct uh, man it's such a T- <sighs> tabletop rpgs it's got that if if it if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of thing and it's all i feel like it's always had that correct formula with everything uh, because it is an industry that appreciates its artists and it's a very visual heavy you know industry and it's this industry that's just so well for writers and game designers and artists you know again 
if it's not if it ain't broke don't fix it i don't i don't think i would really change anything about it i know things change with technology i mean you look at magic the gathering they have their cards on there and they're probably getting into nfts and stuff like that um maybe a little bit of that but even then it's like you know the tabletop rpg industry doesn't really need that if you if you think about it magic the gathering yeah that's a card game pokemon that's a card game but you know you, you don't need the nfts yeah i mean it's like it, again it's a great industry <laughs> there's a reason why it's been going on since probably the 60s <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, we've gone over a lot and uh, you've spoken really, really well. I, 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 I've really enjoyed hearing all the thoughts you have. Is there any final things you want to add? Any final pieces of you know news about Rivers of London, uh, fun Easter eggs that we might hear about or see inside the, uh, the book or um, uh, messages maybe for uh, aspiring artists out there? Oh, man, that's a lot. <laughs> sorry yeah let me just throw three questions to you well, hit. i'll tell you guys this much on the clever kaiju facebook and our youtube which go subscribe to please uh we have a show every thursday and uh, not every excuse me uh the last thursday of every month we have a show called the pen click and we have about you know 10 sometimes 15 artists on there and we'll have a prompt or prompts for the season and each of the artists come on uh, with their piece from each prompt. And nobody sees each other's artwork until the show. And we talk about our process, how we did it. We, we laugh super hard at everyone's art because sometimes it's really funny prompts that we do. And there's just some amazing stuff that comes out of there. And the people who are on the show, amazing artists, they've worked on a lot of stuff as well. So uh, please come check out the pen click. And if you want to watch seasons one and two, uh, they're already on YouTube on the Clever Kaiju YouTube channel, and we're in the middle of season three right now. So come check that out. Um, what else? Uh, advice for artists, yeah, young, young art or just artists in general. Um, Wesley Snipes had a, had a great quote that I saw recently. Um, he said, "Don't let the internet rush you." No, because no one's posting their failures. And I was like, that's a really good quote. Um, I think a lot of artists just see good art and they're like, oh, well, God, I can't, I can't do that. That's so cool. Or that's perfect. You know, you don't know how long it took that artist to learn that. You know what I mean? It, it's like you, you really have to take some steps back from that and think about the time that it took for that person to learn that. And you'll learn it too. Just don't rush yourself, you know? They're not showing all the times they did nest up anatomy and ugly pieces or when they're not showing that. They're showing what they're doing now. And you can work on what you're doing now and hell, you might even catch up and surpass that person. You know, even though it's not a competition, but you know, you, you could end up learning more than that person. Those things happen. So always keep your mind clear that social media isn't everything. Yes, you want people to rec you know, notice you and stuff, but don't let it be your everything. Worry about learning new stuff. You be your own competition and put yourself in a great artist community. Well, like Clever Kaiju. <laughs> and, you know, come and learn. We can all learn from each other. You know, um, there's a person in there. I wish I could remember their name in the Discord, but she does wonderful, like, cartoon work in her sketchbook like when we have our parties um i just sit there and look at her sketchbooks like it's crazy we have these clever kaiju parties we have djs and a giant sketchbook table but i always just look through her book even though i've seen it a million times i'm like let me see your book let me see your book and i pick up things from her and i think that's really cool you know uh because you're always going to learn from someone don't ever let that fool you doesn't matter if a person's a pro novice like you can learn something for anyone artistically it might even be like how you hold your pencil you'll learn something from them 